Hello, I'm Daniel. I'm Sember Flutter SDK developer, and today we're going to talk about how to set up push notification in Flutter using Sember SDK. Now, before we jump in right into the code, let's go through our agenda. And today I'm going to cover two stuff what Sember is, and why we should use it, and how to set up push notification using Sember SDK. Now, first, what is Sember? Well, Sembird is a communication platform that enables developers to add chat messaging and in-app voice and video calling to their mobile and web applications. The Sembird SDK for Flutter is a package that provides Flutter developer with access to Sembird's API, allowing them to integrate the messaging and chat functionality into their Flutter applications. The SDK provides a set of pre-built APIs that handle the communication with the Sember server, making it easy to add real-time messaging and chat to a Flutter app without having to build the functionality from scratch. Now, knowing what Sember is and how we could use the chat SDK, let's jump in how we could set up push notification in Sember SDK. But before we jump into code, we got to first set up Firebase first. So in order to do so, let's first jump into firebase.google.com. And after logging in, you should use, be able to see the screen like the screen shown right now. And the top right corner, you see go to console and let's click on that button. After doing so, we have, we will be creating a Firebase application if you haven't done so yet. And let's create both Android and iOS, assuming that you're creating both application. After pressing that button, you'll be given this page where you will be able to add a project. Let's first click on this button and add a project. Now Firebase gives an awesome steps and guidance to how to set up a project. So follow the steps. And after following these steps and setting up for both Android and iOS, you'll be redirected to the page where you made the application. When you enter this page, you see in this red box if you have correctly made both Android and iOS application. If you don't see both here, you could press Add App on the button on the right to add either iOS and Android on Firebase. Now, assuming that you have successfully added both Android and iOS, let's jump in and configure and get keys from Firebase so that we could implement it in our Flutter app. To do so, first click on the Android button and then click on setting. And then you'll be redirected to the project settings page. Now, since we need to enable notification, we have to enable notification from cloud messaging. Right next to general tab, there's cloud messaging. Let's press on that button and you'll be led to this page. Now in this page, we will most importantly need a server key later on where we will add in the Sember dashboard app. Additionally, when we scroll down, we will be adding a PNS authentication key. And later down in the slide, I'll explain how you'll be able to retrieve a PNS authentication key from the Apple's developer account. Now, but before we do everything, we have to first enable app capabilities on iOS so that you'll be able to receive push notification from the iOS side. The requirements are listed here for iOS and Android. So feel free to pause and look over, but I'll go over on the next slide on how to set up. Now let's first open up our project on Xcode and make sure it's selected on targets. Now click on signing capabilities and we'll be adding two stuff, push notifications and background modes. And make sure in background modes to select both background fetch and remote notification. And you'll see both background modes here and push notifications here if you have successfully added in signing and capabilities. Now let's see how to retrieve APNS authentication key. In order to do so, you first need an Apple's developer account. If you don't, create an Apple's developer account 
and after logging in you will see the screen like shown here now we're going to jump into a page where we could find our certificates so let's click on certificates after doing so we'll be redirected to this page let's create our certificates for our push notification now click on the plus sign scroll down and click on apple push notification service ssl sandbox now go through the steps and configure with the appropriate app that you're gonna give authorization to after doing so you'll be given with the information where you could download your apns key so press download and hold that file somewhere safe in your local and then we're going to jump into both Sember dashboard and previously shown in Firebase, you'll, you'll be able to add APNS key information there. But let's talk about how to set up Sember dashboard. To set up Sember dashboard, you go to sember.dashboard.sember.com and log in. After logging in, select your app and then on the left side, click settings go to notifications and enable notifications so that you get notification. Make sure to select send to device both offline and online if you're trying to get notification from background and in foreground. Now, if we scroll down, you have push notification credentials and this credential information is where we retrieve from the previous slides, the APNS key and the service key from the Firebase. So press add credential and add the APNS key. And for our FCM, you could add the service key from the Firebase, from the Firebase. Now let's jump into how we could implement this into code. First, let's download the packages, Firebase messaging, letter local notification and Firebase core. Now we're gonna first initialize Firebase and it's a good idea to initialize in main app so that it is always initialized and running. Next, we're gonna, we're gonna create a method where we could re both request and register notification. So inside this method of request and register notification, I'm gonna go through it by step by step. We first instantiate Firebase messaging to use Firebase messaging. And in the second line, there's Firebase messaging on background message where we handle background message. And Firebase messaging background handler is a method where I'll be going over in the next line. And then to enable foreground iOS, there's an additional step where we need to call await.firebasemessaging.instant and set foreground messaging notification presentation options and alert to true. And next additional step is to request permission for iOS for a notification. If we have been successfully notified, we will retrieve push notification based on what the platform is. If it's iOS, we're gonna get Firebase messaging dot get APNS tokens. If it's from FCM, we're gonna just call get tokens. We're gonna utilize this token when we're signing in because we will have to upload this token information to the Sember server in order to use push notification. Now next, we have a method where we handle foreground notification. So we call Firebase messaging on message.listen where we are going to get remote message. And in this remote message, we're going to parse and put it into a push notification class and we created a server not, um, notification service class where we will show notification to the user, where I'll be explaining more on the next slide. But first, let's jump into how the methods for Firebase Messaging Background Handler looks like. So in Firebase Messaging Background Handler, we get the remote message and we show that remote message by calling notification service class and the method show notification. And jumping into how notification service class looks like, it looks like this. We get titles and body, maybe some payload to show notification. We're gonna use our Flutter local, local notification package instantiated in the beginning, set up needed information for 
showing notification for Android. And in the bottom, we're gonna call Flutter local notification plugin dot show to actually show notification to the user. And the push notification is a very simple class that has title and body. Now let's jump into the code and actually see how it actually looks like. But before we do that, make sure to always register push token to the December server or else you won't be able to get push notification. So what I've done here is when calling login from Sembird, I also register push note push token from the previous slide to the Sembird server so that I'll be able to send push notification later on. Now let's jump into the code and actually see how it looks like all together. Now let's see code implementation of how everything comes all together. Like shown in the previous slide, I'll go through where each methods and each steps have been implemented in code. All of the push notification has been implemented in main.dart file in the example shown right now. Like shown in the previous slide, I first initialize Firebase.initialize app in the beginning. And when we go into my app, we first, when we initialize, we're gonna call the request and register notification that we have created. So that when we first get into the application, we know that the notification is registered and ready to run and listening on background. Now, this is an example of how to receive a um, notification like this, but another way to get notification is on message.open app where we receive notification via string. So that's a little difference there. Well, this is not needed, so this can be removed. And like shown, uh, the show notification shows the notification and the background notification uh, handler is also included in the main function where we include this background handler in the Firebase on background message. So also to point again, make sure to send register push token to Sember server. Here I created an authentication controller where I handle all the logging in of Sembird and connection of Sembird. And when I first connect with Sembird, I also register push token along with it <coughs> so that Sembird has the device information to send push notification information to. So cold implementation is very simple. So now let's see how to test it out. Now, jumping into testing, we're gonna test utilizing our Sembird dashboard website. Now let's go back to the dashboard.sembird.com website and select your app. After doing so, go to setting, notification, make sure it's on and check all the settings. And when you scroll down, you will see send buttons right next to both APNS and FCM. So if you want to test on Android, press send for the FCM. And if you want to send notification for iOS, press send for iOS. For example, let's for now press send for iOS. If you do so, you're gonna get a pop-up message like this and you will be given a choice who to send the test push notification to. Let's first click on nickname. We're given these three choices, and with these three choices, uh, I decided to choose user ID. I chose my user ID, and here I successfully uploaded my push token. Therefore, we get this push, to push token information right below test profile. If you did not successfully upload push token, you'll be missing in this category. So make sure to upload push token to Sembird server. Now, after doing so, if you press send, you'll be able to see the test push notification on your app. And that is it.
That's how you simply set up push notification on Sembird. Thank you.